Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. So happy that you could make it to our Sunday School lesson. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking more about uh, about Peter. Uh, Mr. Larry gave a, a great introduction to Peter last week. And uh, this week, we're going to talk, uh, if you're looking at the slides, you can see where our uh, lesson is called Peter's Ups and Downs. And we're going to talk a little bit about how Peter is a lot like us. But before we get into the lesson, just want to talk about uh, what we're going to do this summer. I, I know that, uh, that school's out and uh, it's summertime and I, I like to do a lot of things and um, like to usually go on a, a trip or something like that uh, during this during the summer when my daughter's out of school and we can go on a, tr a, tr a family trip or something like that. But um, travel has been eliminated a l or, or limited a little bit because of the coronavirus. So I was thinking of other things that that we could do. and. You know, the one thing that I think about is you know, the beach is, is pretty close to us. It's about a 20 minute uh, drive and I'd love to go, go to the beach and, uh, and, and boogie board and hang out in the water and, uh, and, and soak up some of the sun. Uh, and so I'm hoping that I'll be able to do a little more of that this year than I have done in, in previous years. So um, while we're uh, getting ready for the, for the lesson, I just want you to think a, a little bit and maybe um, discuss with whomever is there with you um, something that you would like to do some more um, this summer. Maybe it's uh, going to your, your swimming pool or, or to a park or something like that. I know that times are going to limit some of the things that we can do, but we sure, but certainly there are, there are some other things. So that's what, uh, that's what I want to do. I want to take more advantage of the, of the beach here in my hometown and, uh, uh, and not worry so much about go, going away, but enjoy my hometown. There are a lot of other cool things here, and maybe uh, I'm going to uh, take my wife, Miss Nadine, and we'll go uh, on a tour of, of downtown and see some of the things that um, are more touristy that, that we don't usually see because, you know, we live here and we take them for granted. But anyway... Um, no more uh, to talk about that. Um, let's go ahead and get into, get into our lesson. Uh, the lesson's title is Peter's Ups and Downs, and it's Matthew 14, uh, 22 through 31. We're going to start out with, uh, with the first part of the passage. is Matthew 14, 22 through 26. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of them uh, uh, to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. All right, so now we've got some some discussion questions here. And be, before I get into the dis discussion questions uh, too much, I uh, wanted to. Uh, this is kind of a uh, if you if you uh, read this read the story or, or if you know it, um, just a little background on what was going on on this on this day. Um, so what had Jesus done, uh, or what had the disciples seen Jesus do, or Jesus had done? Um, earlier on in that day, and this is a uh, this must have been a really big day for those guys because they saw Jesus feed the five thousand. Remember the story: Jesus is uh, all the all the people from the villages follow Jesus in, and he and he does a teaching, and it's getting late, and you know, the disciples say to him, "Hey, you need to send all of these people home so they can eat. It's late, and we don't have enough money to buy them any food and all that stuff." And um, and they have the little boy with the the, the fish and the and the bread and they take that and they feed 5,000 um, men plus women and children with that and have some left over. So this is um, this is what was going on there uh, when Jesus uh, sends the guys, uh, the disciples uh, in the boat to go across to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. All right. And what did Jesus do when he sent the disciples out in the boat? It was uh, it was mentioned there, but uh, Jesus 
uh, went up to the mountainside for some for some solitude, uh, so to be by himself, uh, and he and he went to pray. And I think that's probably something that we, uh, that, or I know that it's something that we see Jesus do on, on a number of occasions. Um, he goes uh, somewhere to be by himself, um, and he prays and he and he talks with God. All right, so Jesus has. Um, Fed the, fed the 5,000. He's gone up on the mountain to pray. He sent the uh, disciples out in, the, uh, out in their boat, and they had taken off to go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. The wind comes up, the waves come, come up, and, um, and, they're, and they're struggling to get, get out there. And all of a sudden, they see a guy walking across the, the lake, and they, they yell out, oh, my, it's a ghost. Um, but immediately... Uh, then we pick up here, and immediately Jesus said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And then Peter says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. Um, and I think this is a, this is a really a, a, a beautiful little passage here, and it tells us a lot. Uh, that we'll talk about on the next slide, our discussion slide. So the discussion slide here, um, how is Peter like us when he realizes that, that it's Jesus walking on the water? And, and I think uh, th that it, for me, um, often when I have uh, something that I've never done before or something that, that is scary, um, I'll, I'll ask God for a sign. Hey, God, is this the right, is this the the right right thing to do? And uh, He may make me feel feel at peace, or uh, but but He'll He'll do something like like we saw Jesus do. You know, Peter asked Him, Hey, if that if that's you, Jesus, then tell me to come on out there. And Jesus said, Come. So it's, it'd be kind of like me saying, Hey, God, uh, you know, I have maybe should I try to get this new job or something along those lines. Uh, and, and God would um, would say some would say something to me, whether it be in a you know a spirit of uh, 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 a passage in the in the Bible that I might read, or um, just a, a feeling of peace uh, going going through the going through the process, uh, things like that. So I think that we see that Peter uh, is is just like uh, just like us, and when he gets the, when he gets a sign and God gives him. The, the sign and, and Jesus says to him at that time, come, uh, he jumps in and he, and he's all, he's all, uh, he's all in walking towards, uh, uh, walking towards Jesus in the storm, walking in the, in the water. But, yeah, there's all, there's usually a but, isn't there? All right, so we'll pick up here at Matthew 14, 30 through 32. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And then he climbed into the boat. The wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And I think... Uh, so our, our next discussion uh, question is, how are we like Peter when he sees the wind and the water? And I think that this is uh, there are a couple of, of lessons that that we can that we can learn here um, for, from Peter. And the first of them is um, we lose uh, focus on Jesus and begin doing things in our own power. And I think that 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 happens, you know, if. Uh, sometimes we think that if it's if God has willed something for us, or if you know if this is the the right thing to do, that there shouldn't be any obstacles in it at all, and it should all be smooth. And when we're starting to try to do something, and it's not that not that smooth, we may um, lose focus and try to and try to fix things in our own power. And we see that Peter did that here. He was focused. He had his eyes on Jesus as he was walking uh, towards Jesus, and he was having no problem walking on the water um, but when he realized that he was out there and the wind was blowing and the and the waves were up and he took his focus off of jesus and started focusing on the problems around him he started to sink but 
uh, just like Peter did, we can ask Jesus to save us at, at any time. Uh, and we see that that there uh, with with Peter uh, as he started sinking, he cries out, Lord, he cries out, Lord, save me. Uh, and, and Jesus does. And I think that we can take a couple of messages from there. You know, if we're sinners and we have not gotten um, the, the grace of Jesus, if we haven't accepted him in, in our hearts, that we can do that at any time. But also if we have um, been saved by, by Jesus and done and done those things, but we've taken our, our eye off of him as we as we sometimes do, we can always uh, reach out to him again uh, and and uh, he is quick to put to put his hand out there uh, and, and welcome us back in. What else can we learn from Peter um, in this story or, uh, uh, you know, around the story? I think this is maybe one of the most important uh, lessons that we can learn. And that's um, when people see Jesus uh, his power in us, like, uh, uh, you know, letting Peter walk on water um, or uh, are allowing us to do something that we didn't think uh, we could do. Uh, he provides the power, power for that or he um, gives us some calm in a scary situation or something like that. Uh, people recognize that, but they also recognize um, Jesus is saving grace because we we model it in our in our behavior. We you know we act differently than than some than some people who who don't know Jesus is saving grace. And people see that and they recognize that. And when they recognize that, they also recognize um, that that's the power of Jesus and that and that's what um, that's what he can do. So. Um, you know, it's a, it's a kind of a, a quick lesson, but I think there was a, there are a lot of lessons that, that we can take from that. We learn a lot about um, not only how Peter is like us in that um, sometimes he shows great faith when he's walking out. Uh, he's, he's the first one really to, to recognize that it, recognize Jesus and he shows great faith in him and he walks. Uh, and and we do that at times. We we accept Jesus and we have great faith and we and we and we walk out. But times may get hard or something like that, and we lose our faith, focus on Jesus just as Peter did, and we start to sink. And when uh, and and when we do that, we yell we yell out to to Jesus. We we reach out to Jesus and we say, Jesus, save us. Uh, and Jesus' saving grace is 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 always there for us. And uh, just like uh, the the guys on on the boat, the rest of the disciples, when they saw uh, Jesus, Jesus give Peter the ability to walk on the water and then save him after he lost his focus, they um, said, "You know, truly, you are the the Son of God." That that when other people see Jesus's power working through us, they realize that Jesus is the Son of God. Right, like every week, um, I want to tell you um, I miss you guys very much. I miss uh, spending our, our time in class. Uh, I, uh, I I want to tell you that I love you and the folks here and, and everyone, Miss Martha, Mr. Lo Mr. Larry, and all of Grace United Methodist Church. Um, we all love you, and we are looking forward to getting back uh, together in in person. But until we do, we'll keep on making the these lessons for you. I hope you have a wonderful week and a wonderful summer and whatever it is that you decided that you wanted to do um, this summer when we talked about it uh, at the beginning. I hope you get to do a lot of it. All right. Um, I will see you guys in a couple of weeks. Have a great week.